Okay, section 7.3. We will be doing in uh, two parts, so if it means you can only watch part of it or watch part of the video right now and then part of it on the second day, that's fine. If you're going to watch the whole thing, um, good too, but there will be um, two parts and I'll sort of give you a hint to that. But we are going to be able today to be able to multiply polynomials and divide one polynomial by another using either division or synthetic division. When I say division, long division, just like you learned how to do long division with regular numbers. Uh, we will use the remainder and factor theorems to help solve problems also. So moving forward right away, let's start with the idea that products and factors of polynomials. Remember, product is nothing more than the way you multiply um, or the answer to a multiplication problem and the factors are the numbers you use to multiply. What are the numbers involved in the process? So here we go in the first one. Write the function f of x equals x minus 1, x plus 4, x minus 3 as a polynomial in standard form. As most of you are well aware, the only difference here is instead of foiling, we have three things, um, so we're going to have to do them two at a time. And it does not matter um, because multiplication is commutative. Which two of those you take first? Uh, I'm just going to do them in order because there's no real shortcut or anything here. So basically I'm going to take the x minus 1 and the x plus 4, multiply those out, get an answer, and then that answer is going to have to be multiplied by what's left, which is the factor of x minus 3. So here we go. Um, foil the first two, first times first, x squared. Outsides, 4x. Insides, or negative 1x, for a total of 3x. Last times last, negative 4. So now I have a trinomial times a binomial, and I will have to multiply, and the only way we can do that is regular distributing. So it might go a while here, but I'm now going to multiply the x times every single one of these. So x times x squared, x cubed, x times 3x, 3x squared, x times negative 4, negative 4x, then plus now the negative 3 times all of them. Negative 3 times x squared, negative 3x squared, negative 3 times 3x, negative 9x, and negative 3 times negative 4 is plus 12. So again, look at those. We'll change colors here. We're going to do some underlining and combining like terms. I only see one cubed term, so I'm going to leave that alone. I see an x squared term here and an x squared term here. They look like they're opposites, so they will cancel. I see an x term here and an x term here, which we can combine, and then I see a constant number. So now all I have to do is put them in descending order, and we should be good with our final answer. Combining those, did you get x cubed? minus 13x plus 12. So write the function as a polynomial means don't leave any multiplication left in it. Multiply it all the way out as far as you can and combining all like terms and then writing it in descending order. Okay, now as you are aware we had the sum and difference of squares when we were factoring and it went something like um, we had the difference of squares. Um, a squared minus b squared, and we would factor that into one plus quantity, one minus quantity. And it didn't matter which one came first as long as you had one of each and you multiply that back out, foiled it back out, and you got a squared minus b squared. That was one of our factoring methods when we only had two terms. Well, now we're going to jump it up. Notice, sum and difference of cubes. It will be recognizable compared to the one we just did because these have to be cubes. The numbers involved in the beginning, you'll only have two terms, and they will definitely have to be cubed combinations. They can always be factored into these two representations. Now look careful. If I have the first term is a cubed, then I should be able to take that cubed number, take its cubed root, and that number goes here. 
take the second term's cube root, it goes here. And when it's a plus, it matches plus. When it's minus, it matches minus. So the first one should just be what's the cube root of each term added or subtracted. Then let's see the pattern. A squared, so if this was the cube root, this is what's left after you take a factor of A out. A times B, these two multiplied together, and then B squared. So square the first, take the product of the two, don't double it, but it's a minus sign, so the sign here is opposite, and then square the last. Here, same thing. If I did, that's an A, and subtract B, then this is A squared. A times B, the product, and it's opposite sign, so if that was minus, this is plus, and then last times last, B squared. So we want to try to factor a combination of perfect sum and differences of cubes, but you have to recognize it first. So here we go. X cubed minus 16X squared plus 64X. Same as we always did before, you better be doing GCF first. And when we do GCF first, whoa, when we do GCF first, we need to take an X out. When we factor an X out, that'll leave us X squared minus 16X plus 64. Now ask yourself, um, you know, what is that? Well, that looks like our perfect square, perfect square, double the product. That's not an example of sum and difference of cubes, because these aren't even cubes. This was not a perfect cube. We couldn't do it. But we can finish factoring from here with what we knew. I've got a first term. I've got a last term that's a perfect square. I've got a perfect squared combination. So x minus 8, the quantity squared, when multiplied out, would turn into x squared minus 16x plus 64. And then with the x out front, would turn back into x cubed minus 16x squared plus 64x. All right, keeping sum and difference of cubes in mind, let's go here. Factoring again. It starts out looking like um, cubes, but it's not. Um, this is definitely one of them we've done before, so good review on factoring. I got four terms, and the rule is when you have four terms, break them into two sets of two. Our two sets of two usually looked exactly like it was, so I'm just going to go plus minus here so I get capture that negative in there. There's a plus. And so now I'm going to ask myself, what is the GCF out of each of those? So I see a common factor of x squared in that first one. And when I factor that out, I get x plus 6 plus in between, and in that second group, I see a factor of negative 5 that I'm going to factor out. They each have a common factor of negative 5, and I would get x plus 6. Then the rule was, look for like parentheses. I see them. They each have an x plus 6. Pull that out as your GCF. So x plus 6 is now my commonality. What's left over? x squared plus a negative 5, or x squared subtract 5. Now, this is two terms, but can't go any further. The second one, x squared minus 5, I need to check because x squared is a perfect square. 5 is not, so that's when that one goes bad, and we are finished at x plus 6 times the quantity x squared minus 5. And it can be written in either order, and they chose the same one we did. Okay, let's go to our next one. I'm only seeing two terms, and previously we only had difference of squares or GCF. And I look at it, there's no GCF, and it's definitely not difference of squares because I'm seeing a cubed. So again, go back to what we just did, difference or sums of cubes. This is definitely a sum, so check it. What is that one thing that multiplies to give me x cubed? x. What is that one thing that multiplies to give me 125? 5. So you have basically tested to make sure they're both perfect cubes and we're ready to write our answer. The rule from today says, take the cube root of the first. This is added, so we want to add in this first one, and the cube root of the second. Times that by the quantity of a subtract add combination, and it goes.
square me, x squared. Take the product of the two, 5x. Don't double it. That's what we did with um, binomial squares. And then product of the last, or product of the last, the last term squared, which would be 25 x squared minus 5x plus 25. Final answer. And we can check it. And they have it written exactly as we do. Good, 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 good. All right, moving on. Now remember, um, and I should go back here for a second, if we had these equal to 0, and we were saying factor them, give me the zeros, you were telling me that this has to be 0 and this has to be 0, okay? Both parts. So out of this one, you would get an answer of negative 6 for the solution, the root, the x-intercept. Okay, this is just vocabulary here. Solution, root, x-intercept. But notice, the factor was an x plus 6. So it's opposite from what you got. That's what we're talking about as we head to this next slide. So the factor theorem. When you look at your factor, x minus r is a factor of the polynomial if and only if r is the solution of the polynomial. So it says here, use substitution to determine if, whether, x minus 1 is a factor of x cubed minus x squared minus 5x minus 3. Well, if x minus 1 is the factor, that would mean, think of it this way, then 1 would be the solution. But this question is, is it? Well, think of it that way then. Put 1 into your equation. So f of 1 comes out to be 1 cubed minus 1 squared minus 5 times 1. Subtract 3. We do the math. 1, 1, negative 5. Minus 3 is negative 8. Negative 8 does not equal 0 because remember, it makes it 0. It is a solution. So this, would we would say, x minus 1 is not a factor of the function or the polynomial. We could also say it, and 1 is not the solution of this function or polynomial. So you could always do it by substitution. Some people would call this trial and error. That's exactly what you're doing, okay? And in doing so here, um, for those of you that need to be done for today, this is what's covered in our first night of the assignment, okay? So let's just pause for a second. Okay, if you're only on board for the second part, welcome back. If you're still with me, then we've done factors of polynomials. Now we're going to review how to do what we call long division. And long division is done exactly the same as if you were dividing numbers. Okay? Um, in class, if you need me to, I can do a long division with numbers. Um, if you're like so far out, you don't remember doing long division, or you need a review with it. But this one says, find the quotient, so the answer to our division problem, of the first polynomial divided by the second. So um, x cubed minus x squared. Now I will tell you they need to be in descending order with no um, missing parts. So right now we have a missing part, so I'm going to pad it with an extra 0. So 0x zero minus 4. And if you want to turn all your subtraction signs into plus a negative, that would be fine as well. All right, on the divisor, we need x squared plus x plus 2. Now check your setup. Okay, long division. It works the same way. You never use the whole divisor. You just start off with the beginning lead piece. So I'm looking at x squared and saying, how many times does x squared go into x cubed? And I'm going to say it goes in there once. Um, or you could say, yeah, it goes in there once, but how many other things do I need? So x squared 
into x cubed. Um, what do I need to multiply by to get x cubed? That might be another way to think of it, a better way to think of it. x squared times what gets me to x cubed? And the answer is x. Now that's not my x column. Here's my x column, so I'm going to put it over the x column. So x squared times x gives me x cubed. Then keep multiplying. x times x gives me a positive x squared. And then 2 times x gives me 2x. Underline like normal. And do not forget, and I like to write it out front, we are subtracting these values all the way through. x cubed minus x cubed, 0. Negative 1x squared minus 1x squared is negative 2x squared. 0x minus 2x is negative 2x. Once you're done with those, bring down the next piece, next digit in our answer, and that would be the negative 4. And we go at it again. Again, meaning, start at the front, x squared. x squared times what will give me negative 2x squared? Well, that would be a negative 2. And our negative 2 goes up top in our quotient area, and we now get ready to distribute and write that under our current values. Negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times x, negative 2x. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Underline, and remember, we're subtracting. Everything looks alike, so that's a good sign. A negative 2x squared minus a negative, gone. A negative 2x minus a negative, gone. And a negative 4 minus a negative. So we get a nice 0. You only really have to write it once. Um, and that tells us we are finished. We are done. And we have now our solution. And we can write the factors, find the quotient. We could say, um, x minus 2 is the quotient. That would be our answer. If they say, what are the factors now? We could say x minus 2 times the quantity x squared plus x plus 2. And that would multiply out to give us that x cubed minus x squared plus 0x minus 4. Okay? All right. Next we need to do something called synthetic division. This is new. This is a little longer process, so look, and you may want to take some good notes, but this process is done over and over the same way all the time. So follow me and follow the example on the side here. Number one, write the coefficients of the polynomial, then write the r value, the zero of the divisor, on the left. Bring the coefficients down the following line. Now when we say this, um, what probably would have been good, um, I'm looking for my original mm, long division. So you knew you had a 1x cubed minus 3x squared plus negative uh, 4x, subtract 12. That was your original polynomial. You want to think of it that way. Um, 1x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. That was your polynomial that you were asked to find factors of. And apparently, um, they asked you to find um, p of 2. Given that 2 is one of the zeros, that's what it looks like. Okay. Um, so we put the 2 out front, so write the coefficients of the polynomial, then write the r value, the 0. So 2 is the 0 um, on the left. Bring the first coefficient down, so we're bringing the 1 straight down. Multiply that R value, that number out front, so in this case the 2, multiply that R value by the number below the line. So we got a 1 down there. So 2 times 1 is 2. We write that product 
um, as you can see, things are not quite lined up. So let me try. Um, that three is really underneath, or that two is really underneath the three. Um, we've got a little, I'm going to try and install locks. I don't know, something happened. But this three and this two are really lined up. They're not over each other, um, and they're locked right now, so hard for me to go back in. So right now, just think those, are, those should be just lined up. They should not be off-centered like they are. So all the way down here, this three and this two, that and that, that and that, that and that, that and that. Okay, so we multiplied the value. 2 times 1 was 2. We put it up there underneath the 3. And now it says write the sum of those two values. So we are adding the 3 and the 2, and that gave us a 5. 3 plus 2 was 5. Okay? And write the product below the next one. So now we take the 5 and the 2, multiply them together, and that's where the 10 came from. And again, these are lined up straight. They don't have to be off-centered like I have it. 10 and negative 4 adds up to be 6. So these should be all lined up. And again, one more multiplication. This 6 times this 2 gave me the 12. Okay, and these should be lined up. You'll see that in my next one we'll do by hand. And so 12 and negative 12 add up to 0. So it said write the sum of the two numbers below the line, multiply the R value. We did that. Write the product below the next coefficient. The remainder is 0. And the resulting numbers are the coefficients of the product. So that means if 0 is that, 6 is a constant term, 5 is an x term, and 1 is the x squared term. So we would have 1x squared plus 5x plus 6. So there is no remainder. This is the constant. This is the x term. This is the x squared right on up. So you're sort of counting backwards if you think of it. So you could now say we have um, x squared plus 5x plus 6 is the resulting um, factor quotient answer. Um, we want to do one together where we can get the lining up and stuff done ourselves. So here, this one makes a little more sense. Um, and you'll see the numbers. So find the quotient using synthetic division, which we just showed you. Okay. And again, you can see it a little cleaner here. These are my original division problems. So here's my polynomial function. Here's what I'm dividing by, the factor. So if the factor is x minus 4, the 0, or the r value, is 4. And that's what I have here. So now I take the coefficients, 1, negative 4, negative 12, place them in order, leave room underneath, and draw my underlining. Okay. The rule is this first number comes straight down below the line. And now that starts our multiplication. 4 times 1 is 4. It goes here. We then add those together, and we get a 0. 4 times 0 is 0. Add those together, we get a negative 12. This one did not come out um, exactly with a 0 in that spot, which means we have a remainder. So in this case now, this is the remainder. The next term is the constant. The next term is the x value. If there was a next term, that would be the x squared value, the x cubed value. So we have an x minus 4 as a factor. And then we have, it doesn't go in evenly, we have um, 1x plus the remainder, negative 12, but it was over the factor x minus 4. So that would be our answer to the quotient of this using synthetic division. Now, question. Why use synthetic when I got long division down and vice versa? Look. You want to use synthetic division um, by a linear bi binomial. So when we had this here, whoa, if that x minus 4 would not have been linear, we would not have been using synthetic. Must use long division when dividing by anything that's nonlinear. Okay? Now, of course, you're going to say, well, I'm going to like one over the other. 
um, you probably will. But you got to remember, linear divisors are the only thing you can use right now, synthetic division on. That's all we've shown. Okay? All right. Is that what I wanted? Given that 2 is a 0 of this polynomial, use division to factor and see what happens on this one. Okay? And so we will, one more synthetic division, try to stay a step ahead of me. So set it up to begin with, with what are your um, values, and don't forget about the missing pieces. Okay? missing pieces, if there are any, and I believe I see one here. So I'm going to write the coefficients of 1, negative 3, I'm missing an x term, so I need a 0, and then I have my constant term of 4. Out front, they told us given 2 is the 0, so if 2 is the 0, you could use synthetic here, and put the 2 out front. You could also use long division to do this. Okay, let's see what happens, see if we got a little better at this along the way. So bring down the first term. 1 times 2 is 2. Add them together, negative 1. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. Add them together, negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Add them together is 0. means I have no remainders, and I have a factor of x squared minus 1x minus 2. The other factor, if I want to write it, since 2 is my solution, would have been an x minus 2. Okay? And we can check our answer. It came out evenly. I don't think we have an issue in any order. Some people say, well, can I factor this further? Yeah, you can try. And it looks like it can be, in this case, into x minus 2x plus 1. Okay? So long division and synthetic. <laughs> Last example. Given our polynomial function, 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus 9x plus 5, Find P of 6 by using synthetic division and substitution. Now, we just did synthetic a minute ago, so we're getting pretty good at this. Let's go. First, since they told us 6 was our value, that's what's there. And we've got 3, negative 4, 9, and 5. Good. So here we go. Bring down, whoops, bring down the 3. 6 times 3 is 18. Add them together is 14. Uh, 6 times 14, it looks like 84. Add them together. 9 and 84 is 93. Uh, multiply it out. 93 times 6, 558. Add it together, 563. So again, we have a remainder left over, but we should be able to write our remaining polynomial. We've got 3x squared, again counting backwards, constant, um, first degree, second degree, so 3x squared plus 14x plus 93 plus our remainder of 563 all over our divisor, which would have been x minus 6. Okay, and you can check your answer there. Looks like we got it. And here they're saying find it by using substitution. That just saying if 6 is our solution, 6 should go in there and make this a 0 if it truly does come out even. So if you put your 6 in by substitution, um, do the math. 46. That'd be 4 times 36. 9 times 6 is 54 plus 5. Whoops. So when you add that together, I'm getting 563. 563 is that same number we got left here. So it's telling us it is not a 0. We've got that much left over, our remainder. And so you know what we said, yep, 563 is our remainder to this problem. It does not divide out evenly. OK? 
Okay, so you've seen some that do divide out evenly, some that don't. You've seen synthetic and long division. We definitely need to pr practice both, and that's what our second day is all about. All right, we are good to go.